Hi guys, welcome back. So there we have it. Australia win two on the bounce against the Springboks. Big win, 30 points to 17. They'll be absolutely made up. Big win for this young team, this new team, Australia. South Africa, not quite good enough. Let's get into this game. It was very finely balanced at half time. Then Australia pull away a little bit and then hang on a bit towards the end when it's a bit too late. But anyway, Australia start fairly well. Four minutes in, I just made a note that they're staying away from the South African set piece quite well, using continuity and not allowing the South Africans to set. And indeed, when Australia got into that continuity phase, it started to offload work uh, back to the blind, back to the open. They look really good. But to emphasise the point, a few minutes later, South Africa do get a big scrum penalty, then a big mall drive. And that pushes Australia right back into a good position for South Africa. And Australia look a little bit terrified of the South African mall, getting their timing wrong in the line out in the first half. Uh, but South Africa muck up the shifted drive to Australia get away with that one. So no score. Then on 12 minutes, Australia, they're running success. They're running back. South Africa's kicks fairly well. Getting into the continuity, South Africa aren't managing to get man and ball with their kicks at the moment. Then a very silly uh, de Klerk ruck penalty gets him a yellow card. That's a bit of a killer. Five metre line out to Australia. Um, and true to form, Australia move the ball away from the mall, not maul it straight away. Then out to the outside centre, Iki Tau, who had a very good first half, slips Pollard in the tackle. To be fair, it was quite a poor tackle from Pollard, actually. He'll be disappointed. Really nice finish. Missed the conversion. That wasn't a great conversion kick either. But 5-0 to Australia. They were absolutely delighted after 12 minutes there. Anyway, South Africa stick to their maul tactic on 17 minutes. A little bit fortunate, maybe, to get a technical maul penalty, but a very good kick, 40 metres on the angle from Pollard. Takes it back to 5-3. to three. Then South Africa, really bad error uh, on 19 minutes on the exit. Unincarne uh, spills the ball, uh, gives Australia good attack in the 22. Two robust tackles. He had some impressive moments in the game. Lovely inside ball to Corin Betty. Then an offload back out to Iki Tau. Lovely try. 12 points to three. They do get the conversion from wide out this time. So a great opening 20 for Australia. They're playing all the rugby at the moment and doing it in the right areas. And keeping that ball moving is causing South Africa big problems. But South Africa come back with a fantastic laser kick from Pollard, a 50-22, which gives them the, uh, the line-out, of course. Get into the 22 with good, good attacking phases. But then De Klerk, another error. Ball spills out of the ruck, a bit messily. It might have been out of the scrum, actually, but he slaps the pass. Hooper intercepts, and I think it was out of a ruck. Um, but anyway, a forward pass prevents that breakaway, which allows South Africa to stay in the 22. They put on the pressure in the scrum. Bit too easy. Get the penalty. 12 points to 6, so starting to edge back. And we've got a clear theme here that if Australia can survive that scrum and maul onslaught, then that will give them the chance for the win. But, you know, can they su survive that onslaught? But anyway, more poor passing and handling put South Africa in terrible trouble in their own 22, which gives away a bit of a soft penalty, so 15 points to 6. Etzebeth, a few minutes later, gets a big play, rips the ball, and South Africa move the ball wide nicely. Now, in this game, South Africa, they did actually pass the ball very well, and they got width on the ball, so it wasn't that they didn't actually move the ball. It was just that creative element, those offloads, they weren't happening, but Australia were making it happen. Uh, Kellaway anyway on this time the ball moves wide looks like he reads the play fantastically well shoots up but the player's in the air when he tackles him so gives away um, the penalty so that's 15 points to nine and then we have a big decision in the game Swinton nearly gets a red lots of chat between the ref and the TMO it looks like it goes from a yellow up to a red but then the TMO kind of talks it back down to a yellow again high tackle yellow card I think it was about right to be fair um, 33 minutes South Africa start to play a bit more again like I said ball in hand working it wide in good midfield position they pin Australia deep but Australia fantastic exit but then South Africa comes straight back, 
good running phases, get the offside penalty, then 15 points to 12, so back to three points, so clawing it back there. And I just made a note at this point, Rhys Hodge, um, who's on at this moment for an injury, continues his errors from last week, made a lot of handling high ball errors in this game. To be fair to him, he comes back and does some physical work very nicely with some tackles, turnovers, but certainly skill-wise it's been a bit of a horror show for Hodge, particularly under that high ball. 39 minutes just before half-time, monster Fafta Klerk box kicks causing havoc, but Australia just about survived with a big counter-ruck. So half-time, 15 points to 12, finely balanced. So second half starts and Australia start by shooting themselves in the foot a little bit with a poor clearance kick from Icky Tao, quick tap penalty from de Klerk, Australia in all sorts of problems, South Africa spreading that ball nicely, getting the width and then as it comes back, de Klerk, a spot space in behind, clever grubber through to Am to score so they take the lead 15 points to 17. And then straight away a couple of minutes later, Australia again shooting themselves in the foot Bad penalties, gifting South Africa this good attacking field position. South Africa bring on their front row, hoping to get a big impact, which actually doesn't really happen. That front row makes a few errors. Another note here, Australia's high ball catching, again, has been a bit of a weakness in this game, so that's something for them to improve. But anyway, Australia finally get out of their half and get into some attack. Um, into the South African half and a lovely over-the-top kick from White lets Australia smash Mapimpi into touch. They get the penalty advantage and move ahead again, 18 points to 17. Super, super tight. A few more Hodge errors, um, but like I said, came back with some big tackles later. Then on 55 minutes, De Klerk just gets his ankles tapped, which bungles his box kick, uh, which is pretty harsh. But Australia get good attacking running phases in the 22. But then White runs into his own player, so both nines uh, mucking up there. And the game's getting fast and loose now, getting quite exciting towards the end. Australia spot a huge overlap in numbers down the blind side, which they manage to get away with good hands. And then Tupo, a bit of a showboating, no look, one hand pass, 2v1 to Corin Betty. I mean, Tupo is very exciting to watch. But anyway, Corin Betty gallops in for his try, 25-17. And then the second try for Corin Betty follows a few minutes later and Australia start to cut loose. Big Rhys Hodge turnover, trying to make up for his spill balls. Karevi lovely ball to Samu who breaks, who just stumbles and falls over. And then Corin Betty uh, blazes through the, a big gap in the scramble defence. 30 points to 17. It looks like that could be the game. But in the last 10 minutes, South Africa have all the pressure. And if they'd scored early in that last 10 minutes... We could have had a comeback. But anyway, silly uh, Australian errors, um, all offside from chasing a kick, completely unnecessary. Start that process of putting them under the pump. And we have quite a lot of line-out mauls. Australia shoves South Africa into touch. They have a five-metre scrum, but a big jackal from Hooper. So they're just starting to hang on, starting to hang on. South Africa come back again, but Herschel Yantes fumbles the ball at the base. Another big error. Another scrum, uh, scrum for South Africa five metres out. <laughs> and then we get um, a maul, five metre maul, but the ball's not thrown in straight by Mark. So South Africa did have chances in this last 10 minutes um, and muck them up, essentially. They get another chance, a quick tap penalty, five metres out, another penalty, another five metre maul. But no, a Karevi Jackal gets away with it. Visa a bit frustrated. Bit of a, a shoulder clear out gets him a yellow. Not the worst yellow I've seen, but just frustration there. The Australian forwards try and wind the clock down, but get it wrong and seal it off. South Africa get one final chance, which won't win them the game, but could get a bonus point. But another mistake, an overthrown line out. So a bit of a horror show of errors from South Africa in good possession in that last 10 minutes the game finishes 30 points to Australia, 17 to South Africa. Like I said, 2-0 uh, to Australia. South Africa's chances of winning the Rugby Championship probably gone. Um, huge for this young Australian side. They're a very new side, been rebuilt. They've had to work incredibly hard for these wins. South Africa, we know their scrum and maul can be a big weapon, but it wasn't big enough today. 
Yes, they moved the ball about a bit, but didn't really create. So I think they do need to add a little bit more to their game to be a bit more all over the park. Australia, definitely not perfect. Work really hard, but certainly their continuity, their offloading, their spotting of gaps and exploiting was excellent. They'll be delighted. Uh, let me know what you guys think, who stood out for you, and I will catch you next time.